Hey there, fellows. All right, so check this out. That's our molding machine, which is fully functional and used by the boys to make body panels and such. You can actually custom order them for yourself if you want. Hit us up. Now, the machine works thanks to... So there's a vacuumator inside the machine, right? Or a vacuum pump, to put it in simple terms. It creates a pretty serious vacuum. To the point where, in the moment when the part you're working on is taking shape, well, the vacuum is actually so strong that if the mold wasn't done properly and had a weak spot, it can easily be crushed by it. We've seen some amazing things happen on this machine. Amazing and weird. Though that might be down to us not being used to seeing stuff like that. Anyway, the vacuum generated by this thing is so powerful that it got us thinking. Like, why not try to make an assembly consisting of a piston and a cylinder with a certain internal volume from which we can pump the air out to hopefully create a really strong connection. Of course, we want to see exactly how strong a connection we can get. And how do we test that? Well, we're going to start by taking a lot of them and a couple of wheels that we are going to mount via some vacuum spacers. So one half we bolt to the hub, the other to the wheel, and the vacuum is what will keep the wheel in place. I guess you can call this a sort of quick release. We are not going to need any rattle guns or wrenches. Instead, just an air compressor to suck the air out. So yeah, we're making a vacuum-based wheel mounting solution. Let's do this. We've got a special merch offer for you, fellows, to brighten the mood in these turbulent times. Starting today, we'll be offering a mystery gift box. When purchasing the box, you're guaranteed to receive a certain selection of stuff from our shop, as well as the chance to win something big. You spend a fixed $30 price for the box, and you're guaranteed to receive a Garage 54 mug, a pair of socks, a sticker, an air freshener for your car, as well as a key fob. One out of ten buyers will be sent an expensive gift on top of that, which could be a cap, t-shirt, hoodie, or a document holder. So we'll be putting something expensive into one out of every ten boxes. If you'd like to support our channel and try your luck, there's gonna be a link in the video description. Vacuum wheel mounting solution, no nuts or bolts. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Sorry for the sick sounding voice. Whatever blooms in April and I'm allergic to did this to me. Okay, so here is where we're at with this. We've got a couple of these lovely... One of these is a cylinder, the other a makeshift piston thing. As you might have guessed, this part is going to be bolted to the wheel. You'll notice that this flange has the same bolt pattern. As for the counterpart, I mean the piston, that's going to slip into the cylinder. And already, without even any additional seals, it only moves up until... You cover the hole, after which it stays put. You know, I think we should make a groove to stick a rubber seal into to make the vacuum connection even more reliable. Okay, so this part will be bolted to the wheel, which has a center bore, of course. And so here's what we're going to do. In order to be able to pump the air out, we'll take a fitting, drill a hole for it, though we might not even need to. So we weld that on here, the fitting, and screw a ball valve onto it. That's going to allow us to connect the vacuumator to suck the air out, at which point we close the valve and disconnect the hose, without having to worry about the air finding its way back in. We should have a sustainable vacuum, and I really hope it'll be enough to... 
keep the wheels in place. Right then, let's finish putting together the system and begin the testing. Okay, so look here. This turned out quite well, I'd say. We got that bolted to the hub, but we did have to make a few revisions. Specifically, we welded on a couple of tabs. On this half as well, obviously. So on this part we have a sort of lock that slides into the slot on the other half. And the reason we did this is to... Well, this is quite obviously the front wheel, and I can easily see the piston slipping inside the cylinder. And with this being the front wheel, imagine it slipping when you press the brake pedal. The tabs are there to prevent that from happening. And of course we did the same thing with the rear wheel, which needs them even more, with it being the driven wheel. Without the tabs, the hub is just going to spin. That we do not need, and so we've made a couple of locks on each wheel. Yeah, plus we've decided to play it safe and make a couple of them, instead of just one per wheel. Right, why don't we put these on and start the testing then? Yeah, I should have turned it first. Missed the mark? There we go. That was easy. Now we do the same thing with the rear wheel. Is it in? Yes, it is. Now we connect the vacuumator, pump the air out. Yeah, I think that's where we need to start. After that, we close the valves, wait for 20 minutes, to then try to pry the wheels off. That's to make sure there is no leakage. We wouldn't want that at all, given it might lead to the wheels falling off somewhere. But if there isn't any, then we good. Okay, flip it on. And now we wait. Okay, I think that's enough. No need to keep it on for too long. Doesn't seem like much with a tiny surface area. Won't budge. Who wants to give it a try? Okay then. Turn on the machine, let's go do the other one. How do I get this on tight? There we go. Judging by the sound it's making, when we hear a ring, that's how we know we're done. I can hear it, time to close the valve. Switch it off. Nah, man. You're never prying that off. It is on tight. Now we need to wait for a bit and try prying them off again to see whether they stay connected. And that we're about to find out. So a bit of time has passed and we're looking good. And that is very reassuring, which is why I suggest bringing the car down and taking this outside to see how well the wheels are able to hang on. Let's do this. The car is running, let's head out. Slowly. So we'll start. So far so good. Through the gate. Are we clear? Yes, we are. 
Yeah, I should have let the engine warm up. Eh, no worries. I think I'll take it easy for now. Because who knows? I mean, that is vacuum. Moving along. And here we have a bit of space where we can smash the gas. Let's try this out. Will they stay attached? Well, they are so far. Don't stall, please. So in this direction, it's all good. They're not trying to evacuate when I go this way. That's because they're being pushed in. But what if I try the other way? Will they stay put? Everything seems all right. And one down. It wasn't up to it. What to do now? I guess we grab an air receiver, pump the air out of it. Also, we need to get a hose. Oh shit, we also need a jack, right. We're gonna need a jack. To put the wheel back on. No, the back wheel... It seems okay. It's not looking to evacuate. But the front, well... My guess is that because most of the weight is up front, it's under a bit more stress. Though the back wheels are spinning faster, and that one is not falling off. But this one did get pulled off. No worries, this is a quick release. We'll put it back on in no time. So with this sort of quick mount system, putting the wheel back on is gonna be easy. Quick and easy. Okay, where? There they are. Right, gotta open the valve. Now I take that cylinder we pumped all of the air out of. Come on. Close this. Shut the valve on the cylinder. Remove the hose. And we're good to go. Oh, really? What happened? Did the back wheel fall off? Yeah, I think so. Wow, it broke off? So here's the situation. The vacuum turned out to be pretty tenacious. It keeps the wheel stuck on real tight. And though we did lose this wheel, that's totally fine. Because this one is under a bit more load, it likely has more grip, and I do suspect we might have a tiny leak in there somewhere. 
I mean, foam tape does make for a good connection, but perhaps we still haven't quite gotten this down yet. Because none of us are plumbers, you know? Anyway, what matters is, this is a working setup. 107%. The vacuum does make for a tight connection. Also bear in mind that it wasn't all that extreme, the vacuum. Like no minus tenth degree stuff happening. We were using a regular vacuumator. Which creates a rather mild vacuum. And even so, this worked rather well. The connection was able to bear quite a bit of load. And while I was out driving, a curious idea occurred to me. For what else we could do with spacers of this type? What else we could do with this sort of mounting solution for the wheel? By the way, if you have any suggestions, feel free to share them. I suspect we all might be thinking of the same thing. Anyway, fellas, this works, it's all good, and that's all I have for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.